Ahoy! Today we have the PTR online, the public test realm for New World. And with that, we also have access to the Void Gauntlet. Now, we've already tested a bunch of stuff on PTR, but what I wanted to do before I get into all the other changes, because there are tons and tons and tons of them, a lot of stealth changes as well, that really change how the game is played, in my opinion, in a good way. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Void Gauntlet itself, its abilities, the skill trees, as well as the extra perks that you can get for each ability. This information is from New World Database, nwdb.info. Uh, as always, they provide very up-to-date information on all of this type of stuff. Uh, and they have a PTR section where you can look at the changes. So that's why I wanted to talk about these abilities a little bit more. Uh, we we'll begin with the Annihilation Tree, and then we look at the K Tree after. And I always look at the ability perks when I talk about the different abilities as well. The first ability is Void Blade. So by default, your attack uh, is a ranged attack. And if you use this ability, it turns your basic attack into a melee attack. Kind of unconventional, normally you would expect it's the other way around. But um, this comes with a variety of perks later in the tree, which kind of give it a little bit more logic, I would say. So it has a normal basic attack swing, I would say. Overall, it's most similar to the sword. It has a slashing attack and a thrust attack. The slashing attack deals 100% weapon damage, and the thrust attack deals 150% weapon damage. Um, both attacks inflict disintegrate on successful hits, dealing 5% weapon damage per second, and reducing the damage absorption by 5% for 8 seconds. And this stacks up to 3 times, so 15% uh, each. Which means that effectively, on top of that weapon damage, you get damage over time, but you also apply a rend. And this is something that, in my opinion, is extremely potent, a 15% rend just from using melee attacks. Uh, something that no other weapon has like that. They have to use specific abilities to apply rend. So this can be used to amplify other people's damage. And in many ways, that seems to be uh, the theme of this skill tree as well. This has a uh, 15 seconds duration uh, on the Void Blade itself. But the cooldown of the ability is 25 seconds. So you have to have cooldown reduction in your, well, either in your gems, in your armor slots, in your rings, uh, or through perks from the skill tree that we'll get to in order to have this up permanently. Otherwise, it'll be expiring in between. And the matching perk for this, for if you get an armor piece or weapon that has this perk, is Voracious Blade. While below 50% health, successful Void Blade hits heal self for 30% of the damage done. So essentially, you get a 30% lifesteal uh, when you're below 50% health. I think this is a decent perk, it's a nice perk to have, but uh, looking at some of the perks that we get later down the road here, it's just uh, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. The next skill is Oblivion. Summon a circular rift of void energy at your feet that deals 30% weapon damage per second to enemies and grants empower to self and friendlies. Uh, increase damage by 20%. So it's a, just a 20% empower for everyone around you. It has a 5 meter radius and a 6 second duration. Now this cannot be casted anywhere and it doesn't follow you. It's literally just a circle that you put down on the ground where you are. Uh, Fire Mages may be familiar with that. And you have to stay in that place if you want this effect. So 30 mana costs here, 20 second cooldown along with that. Uh, I think this is a very potent skill. I think a 20% empower is very strong, but at the same time it's limited uh, to a specific area. So you really have to get into the thick of it or have a bunch of ranged people around you. Like, I mean, you could do this between like four musket players as well and empower all of them. Uh, but yeah, either scenario, uh, you're going to have to position strategically in order to get the benefit of the empower. Now, what, in my opinion, makes this skill really, really insane is actually the item perk. The matching item perk that I found here is Nullifying Oblivion. On activation, Oblivion removes limited duration buffs from enemies within its radius. In other words, all buffs except, like, I guess food buffs and, and honing stones and stuff, I think they don't count as limited duration buffs, uh, are removed in this 5 meter radius. And that's the same size as like a sacred ground, for example. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you do this like on point in a war and there are multiple enemies on point, they lose all their fortifies, they lose all their empowers. Uh, I don't even know what happens to things like haste as well or like bloodlust if they get uh, uh, temporarily cleansed as well. So this can really shut a team down if you apply it in the right moment. Um, and I think this is going to be a very core perk. And speaking of core perks, uh, we're getting to Petrifying Scream. 
Unleash a Void Infused Scream, dealing 100% weapon damage, staggering and inflicting root to enemies in 5 meters in front of you. Uh, this is a relatively small area, 5 meters is not very long in, in New World. It's, uh, it's some, some of my uh, company mates said it's like uh, half the distance of a reap roughly. And it disables enemy movement for 2 seconds with the root. Now, 25 uh, mana cost, 15 seconds cooldown. Yeah, okay, it's a root so far. Doesn't sound super crazy, but it's it's a nice CC for sure. But then, you can turn it into the Putrefying Scream. Unsuccessful hit, Petrifying Scream inflicts disease, reducing the target's healing by 50% for 10 seconds. This makes it the strongest anti-heal in the game right now. The Hatchet anti-heal is uh, 30%. And it's also for 10 seconds, it was always like the, the tooltip was weird there, but it was, it was always 10 seconds and now the tooltip has changed to actually show 10 seconds as well. Um, but yeah, this one, <laughs> still better because it's 50% at 600 gear score. If we go down to 500 gear score, we still get 45% healing, or like five, yeah, around here. So it's still most certainly good at this stage anyways. So those are our left tree perks, but let's look at the right side as well before we get deeper into the additional abilities. Then we have the Orb of Decay here. Fire an unblockable orb that passes through enemies. Deals 100% weapon damage and inflicts Disintegrate, dealing 5% weapon damage per second and reducing the damage absorption by 5% for 8 seconds. Sounds familiar, this is the same on Void Blade here. Um, and this also stacks up to 3 times. Uh, at max range it transforms into a healing orb and returns uh, healing friendlies for 20% weapon damage per second uh, for five seconds. Healing scales exclusively with focus. So this is something you will see in general here that the healing perks uh, will all scale with focus, whereas the damaging perks obviously uh, scale with int as well, or with weapon damage depending. Uh, the weird thing is that currently the Void Gauntlet doesn't really work properly with the Ember Gem yet, so that makes things a little bit confusing. We're still trying to figure out what's going on there. Uh, that probably needs some fixing. But yeah, uh, again, this one, this time the rent can be applied from range, uh, so that is definitely pretty nice. Um, and this is a relatively uh, large projectile as well, so this is relatively easy to hit, I would say. Um, then, oh, the perk for that uh, is the uh, Diminishing Orb. Uh, on hit, Orb Decay reduces the duration of target's buffs by 50%. This one is really interesting, right? It's, it's go also going in the way of uh, cleansing buffs somehow. But I, I really don't know which buffs this will affect. I, I doubt this will affect something like Honing Stones or food buffs because that would make uh, any war very, very expensive just because of Void Gone and Um But yeah, reducing the buff duration is something that I think would be very effective. It's kind of the counterpart to the life staff being able to uh, remove debuffs. So this could be very potent. I think a lot of people still undervalue the impact of uh, buffs during a war. Um, it depends on how quickly the buffs can be refreshed, so how good this really is depends a lot on the target, but I think especially melees can also be affected by this a lot if they have something that they have to stack up and that has a very short duration. Um, that really makes a difference too. And then we have Baleful Tether. Fire projectile that tethers you to an enemy, weakening it and empowering you by 4% per second, uh, up to 20% maximum. So again, another empower here, uh, which you could technically combine with this one as well for 40% empower. And you get even more powers later, don't worry. <laughs> um, and they get weakening, so they, they weaken, so they deal less damage. The tether ends if the target moves beyond 15 meters with a 10 seconds duration. 25% mana and a cooldown of 25 seconds. Uh, relatively long cooldown given the duration, but you can probably get a lot of cooldown reduction going and just kind of permanently bind an enemy. And also, you may think, okay, well, they'll just get away easily because 15 meters is not very long. That is true, and I think this perk is actually something that works pretty well with the melee stuff. But there's another perk. Slowing Tether. This is the item perk for that ability. On successful hits, uh, Baleful Tethers inflicts slow, reducing the target's movement speed by 30% for 3 seconds. Now, this will not lock them in the ability for the entire duration, obviously, because it's just 3 seconds and the ability is 10 seconds. But it means that you can at least secure a few ticks relatively easily after learning the ability, you probably get the 12% of power and the 12% weaken on them relatively easily, and then maybe after that they can get away. Also depends on if they like dash out right away or whatever. Um, but yeah, generally seems like a very interesting ability in that way. And then we have Essence Rupture. Fire projectile that inflicts Essence Rupture for 10 seconds, healing anyone that hits the target for 20% of the damage done. 
does not apply to damage over time. Now, this ability is relatively hard to hit, I think. It's a relatively small projectile. Um, but essentially, it gives everyone hitting the target 20% lifesteal. Uh, again, something that I think is very interesting because it's kind of like indirect healing. So instead of um, you healing them, they have to deal damage to others to heal, which would make me think that we're driven towards a more damage-heavy meta, especially with uh, some of the other changes that I'll talk about in a later video today. Um, the upgrade for this one here is Empowering Rupture. On Killing Blow on a target, you're afflicted with Essence Rupture, gain in power, increasing your damage by 30% for 5 seconds. Um, this one is interesting, because I really like this perk. I think it's really interesting, because you don't even have to kill the target. Um, because it just says on killing blow, so somebody else can kill it for you as well, as long as you have the effect on them. Um, but it's relatively far down the decay tree, which is more of a support tree overall, though obviously still dealing damage. Um, and it gives you empower. It gives you a massive empower as at that, and I mean, it's like one of the, I don't even know, four different empowers you get in this kit, but um, it's it's a bit surprising to me that they combine that with, with this ability, since it's like a, you know, 10 second debuff that heals your allies so we're gonna see like if you can do like interesting follow-ups from that in a war for example you just put that on a target that target gets burned and then suddenly you have a massive amount of bursts on the next one or something but uh yeah definitely not a <laughs> not a dual uh perk here but uh, a very interesting one no less so now let's look a little bit into the additional perks uh, let's start with void blade uh, Fortified Blade on, uh, gives you Fortify when you use the ability and for 5 seconds, 20% Fortify, which is actually quite good in my opinion. So um, if you're using Void Blade, which question is, are you going to use Void Blade, um, then I think this is going to be very effective. I think if you're going to use Void Blade, you have to have a playstyle that's very uh, catered around it and a build that's very catered around it uh, in order to get the frequent reset so you can keep it up and everything. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see about that. And then um, you get Vicious Void, which gives you uh, plus 10% critical damage on Void Blade attacks. I actually had took a screenshot already, I uh, have to look it up again. But um, the uh, crit damage uh, of the Void Blade, uh, or of the Void Gauntlet itself, is 1.3, the modifier, which is relatively low. So this turns it into a 1.4 modifier, uh, which is a lot more on par with other weapons. And I, I think that is because, obviously, when you have it in a melee form, you want to have a bit of a better multiplayer. But keep in mind that you, on the other hand, get a rent that other melee weapons don't have immediately. So that kind of offsets that a little bit anyways. And then you have successful thrust attacks heal self for 5% of weapon damage per disintegrate stack on the target. Uh, scales exclusively with focus. So this is interesting, and I'm not quite sure um, how this is supposed to work, because it, say, it says it scales with weapon damage, but then it says it scales with focus. So I'm not sure what they mean by that, because the weapon damage is not determined by the focus. So I guess it's just like the weapon base damage if you're specking into int. Um, it's important that it says thrust, adam thrust attack specifically, because uh, you have a slash attack and you have a heavy thrust attack. So it's only your heavy attacks um, that do that. Um, but then it also heals for 15% of weapon damage with every heavy attack, which means that your heavy attacks would become quite dangerous if you're using this. Now, if we're using Oblivion, then... Um, we're getting the empower effect uh, and uh, d dealing additional damage in that area. So that's probably where you want to fight. And you can apply additional effect here. You can apply weaken to the target inside that radius, uh, reducing their damage by 5% per uh, for 5 seconds per hit. And this stacks up to 3 times, so 15% weaken. So makes them even weaker when fighting you in the Oblivion Circle, which means you can really area deny people. Like you can get on the point in a war or in outpost rush, and if somebody has to like chooses to fight you, they basically have to go into the oblivion uh, or wait it out, which is six second duration. That's manageable, but uh, if you have enough cooldown reduction, you'll probably have that up relatively frequently, and they get a lot of debuffs to, for getting into the area. And then you can also get invigorating oblivion, giving you a plus fifteen stamina per second for self and friendlies while inside the radius, which is obviously huge. Like that means you can dodge so much more, you can block so much more. But blocking with the void gun is another story. Uh, we can talk about that at this point because the Void Gauntlet doesn't actually block in that sense. Instead, it converts your health into mana. You lose health per second when you block with the Void Gauntlet and get mana back for it. I think it's a, it's a conversion of, um, I think it was like 30% or something, um, like 30% of your mana back or something for, for like 600 health or something. I'm not quite sure about the exact numbers, but uh, either way, it's going to make it so that blocking is not really an effective strategy for you, 
but if you need mana and you can use that to heal yourself then that's uh what you can use it for because you can use abilities to heal more than you lose from the sacrificial part of it but i really like this by the way this is a, a very like warlock-esque mechanic a very reminds me of the old wow days and how the warlocks work there so i'm a big fan of that but anyways uh you'll still be able to use that stamina obviously to dodge and uh kind of just hide people around your oblivion and, and cancel a lot so that's gonna be interesting though there are some changes to stamina and cancel stuff as well um that make this a bit different but again that's a little bit too much to cover in, in one video here then when it comes to the petrifying scream the one that is in front of you and roots them um there is an extra perk here, Bone Chilling Voice. Root in uh, duration increased by one second on targets below 50% health. Three second root, that's pretty big. That means uh, if you catch someone below 50%, you can really lock them down. You get the anti-heal on them. So basically, if you catch any target that's like a little bit low, then you put this on them and they're just basically dead at that point. I think this would be extremely effective in Wars. Uh, if you have some other target callers, they go on the target first and then you pop in. As soon as the target is just, just below half health, you just blow them up with this. Um, that should be very interesting. And then you also gain Fortify for each enemy hit, increasing the damage absorption for 10% per 10 seconds, stack up to three times. 30% Fortify, pretty massive if you ask me. Um, so I think uh, that's also a nice bonus, but I feel like in many situations you're looking more to focus down a single target with this one. So it depends on how useful it'll be, but I think it'll definitely be a good perk to pick. And then we have a Void Caller, unsuccessful ability hit, gain a stack of Void Essence. At six stacks, consume all stacks and gain a three meter aura that heals self and friendlies for 30% weapon damage uh, and deal 30% weapon damage per second to enemies within. The healing scales with it. focus, it has a five seconds duration and a 20 seconds cooldown. This perk is a little bit confusing to me um, because it's a healing perk at the end of the damage tree, but it's also a damaging perk at the same time. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually not quite sure how effective this will be. Um, and What's going to be interesting, I think the way it's worded is um, that every hit that you do with a Void Blade will cause, uh, count as an ability hit. Because otherwise I wouldn't see how you can consistently stack this. Um, and if that's the case, then uh, this should be relatively easy to stack and you should have this relatively frequently. And this goes for a lot of other perks in the tree as well. So yeah, not, assuming that's how it works, um, this would make this perk proc pretty consistently. I think that would be pretty strong if you're using the Void Blade. Now let's look a little bit at the uh, the other skills in here. So for second pack, it's really straightforward. 10% damage while below 50% mana. Uh, you can obviously do like a lot of juggling there. Uh, you can uh, go up and down in mana depending on uh, on how much you block in order to restore mana as well. Uh, what, what we found generally is if you pick the right perks, it's uh, pretty much near impossible to run out of mana. <laughs> so yeah, it really depends. Um, then we have Keen Confidence, increasing the critical chance by 10% when above 50% health. So that is something very con uh, very important when, when it comes to things like the critical modifier here. And there's a lot of other things that play into crit, so that encourages you to generally keep your health high. Then Keen Humility, 10% critical chance while all abilities are on cooldown. This one's a little bit weird to me because it kind of encourages ability spam, uh, whereas especially Petrifying Scream is an ability that I feel like you want to hold sometimes. But at the same time, fair enough. Um, you get the benefit uh, at certain situations. And otherwise, you still have the 10% here. So that's a pretty easy 20%. Uh, you can get another 10% from your ring, another 10% from your weapon, you get 40%. And I already saw that a lot of the uh, the void gauntlets that you can get also have additional crit chance or crit damage. So really looking at like 1.5% crit damage and 50% crit chance if you've got everything active. So it's maybe not a problem that not all of them are always active. Then we have Refreshing Precision, uh, Cool Interaction on all abilities on critical hit, 10%. And that's, you know, where this stuff comes in, right? That's what makes this kit so spammable. spammable. If you have a lot of crit chance, then you can get a ton of Cool Interaction. And you can spam things over and over and over. Uh, again, at that point, the question is, do you even need Void Blade or can you just do that without? But uh, it gives you an extra 10% critical damage. So, yeah, uh, pros and cons, really. And then we have Empowering Proximity. Uh, gaining power when casting abilities within 5 meters of an enemy, uh, increasing damage by 10% for 5 seconds, stacks up to 3 times. Again, absolutely massive. You're gonna cast this within 5 meters of an enemy, Oblivion. 
no way around it because it has a five meter radius. You're going to cast this within five meters of an enemy because it is a five meter range. And you're probably going to cast Void Blade when you're close to an enemy as well. So yeah, that's just three, th three stacks basically. So this should be a very, very easy way to, uh, to get those up. And uh, again, pretty massive how many empowers you can get. Uh, and that's kind of what I think the Void Blade plays around that you technically have less damage than other melee weapons, but you get so many damage amplifiers through empowers, so many uh, rends, and then certain weaken effects as well that that um, like buffs your weapon so much compared to theirs that it should kind of offset it. Uh, Essence Harvest. Uh, <clears throat> Essence, Harvest Essence Health Drain is reduced by 50% while below 25% mana. Uh, I think this is uh, referring to the block, or the replaced block essentially. Um, and uh, yeah, just gives you a little bit uh, uh, extra um, options to get mana back because I think this side of the tree is not that mana restore heavy. So it's more worth it to use your health for it if you're at low mana. Um, it, but at the same time, you also get more damage while low mana. So you can kind of like try and juggle your mana below 50% and then when you get too low, you just uh, br briefly use Essence Harvest, uh, Harvest Essence in order to uh, restore some mana, but keep it below 50% and just kind of toggle between those uh, and get some health restores from all the other perks in this tree. Uh, speaking of restoring health, there's Leeching Agony. Uh, on critical hit, gain health equal to 15% of the damage done. So 50% lifesteal on a crit. And again, you can get massive amounts of crit chance with this build, 40 to 50% if you're specking right and have the right items. So you would get this quite off. So effectively, this is almost a 7.5% lifesteal. Uh, consistently, <laughs> along with the other stuff. And then you have Refreshing Frailty here, which uh, gives you 5% cooldown reduction on all abilities uh, when successfully hitting enemies afflicted by three or more debuff stacks. And this can be from different debuffs. Uh, if you've looked at the number of different debuffs and buffs we're applying here, this should be pretty easy. You can have like a root here, you can have um, a weaken here, is there another debuff in here? Uh, you can have a rend here and, and whatever else. So uh, there should be pretty easy ways to achieve this uh, pretty consistently for even more cooldown reduction. So you can reset abilities quite, quite often. And then we have the other side. Let's reset uh, this one, go over to the decay skill tree. Um, if we look at Orb of Decay again, that was the projectile uh, that reduces enemy damage absorption primarily, uh, but also deals a decent amount of damage and also heals allies at the same time for 100% weapon damage total. Um, the first point here is 5% mana per hit, uh, per enemy hit with the orb. So nice mana restore. And not much to say about that. Uh, slowing orb, the orb slows enemies are afflicted by any debuff. Again, there are tons of debuffs in both trees here. This should be pretty easy. Uh, reducing their movement speed by 30% for three seconds. Uh, obviously massive because you can kind of change this with, uh, with Baleful Tether and its upgrade, uh, the slowing tether. Because then you can get the 30% slow from the slowing tether. And then afterwards you can chain that into the slowing orb for another 30% slow for three seconds again. Or you can stack them depending on what you want to go for. But either way, should be a very consistent slow. Then you have Detonating Orb, which for some reason looks like Sundering Shockwave. Uh, press the ability input again to detonate the orb with a 4 meter explosion radius. Depending on the orb's phase, the explosion will either damage enemies for 100% weapon damage or, and apply a stack of Disintegrate or heal friendlies for 70% weapon damage. Healing scales exclusively with focus. Um, it's a bit vague here because it only says <laughs> it's uh, it's depending on the orb's phase, but like I guess, uh, you know, if it's towards the end, it'll heal. Um, this is basically uh, comparable to if you played Smite to ESET's uh, spirit ball that's kind of how it works you throw it forward the same way and then you can just activate it to detonate it um which yeah i think it's a pretty fun mechanic i really like that in general uh then moving over to the baleful tether where you link with an enemy and uh, empower yourself and weaken them successful hits against a tether target or reduce uh, reduce other void gauntlet cooldowns by five percent um this one obviously very massive if you've like somehow tied yourself to a target this could even be combined with something like void blade or whatever else you want um you get consistent cooldown reduction, and there's so many other cooldown reduction perks over here uh, that, yeah, you can almost instantly reset some of the cooldowns from what we've seen, from what we've tested, because it's just cooldown reduction everywhere, and this is just another piece of that puzzle. Uh, tethered focus, 100% mana regeneration while the tether is active. I don't even know if it's needed because there's so many ways to get mana, but it is another one, I guess. Um, Soul Eater, regain 80% weapon damage as health if the tethered target dies. 
schedule exclusively with focus. Now, this to me just sounds like it's on the, like it's just your weapon damage once. So it's a nice health restore if you if, if the target that you tether dies. Um, doesn't seem like a particularly great final perk to me, but maybe I'm underestimating it. Because I mean, I, I'm not a big fan usually of perks that rely on enemy death to be effective. Um, but at the same time, you don't have to be the one killing the target, so I guess that helps. Then we have Essence Rupture. Um, again, this is the one that uh, gives it like a, a healing over time, if I recall correctly. Um, no, yeah, basically uh, the one that, that heals uh, enemies when they're getting... Uh, he heals allies when they're hitting enemies, when they're hitting a marked enemy that's marked by Essence Rupture. Um, this one is also very, very strong. Invigorating Rupture, players additionally receive 15 stamina when hitting the afflicted target. Um, for melee chases, this is absolutely insane. Like a consistent 15 stamina. So uh, if you think, for example, of um, a, medium a medium weight dex user, um, that would do like a two light attack combo and then a dodge. Uh, if they have 150 dex, they literally have all the stamina back instantly so they would have to they basically have to light attack dodge light attack dodge to even like get rid of the stamina a little bit because of how effective this will be so this is pretty crazy like if you're marked by this uh, you're marked for death if any melee is sticking to you and then you have overflowing essence friendlies within four meters of the afflicted area are healed for 80 percent of your weapon damage when essence rupture ends it's going exclusively with focus again kind of weird it's just like at the end of it um yeah I guess there's a 10 second duration. Uh, I suppose if the target dies, that also counts as uh, essence rupture ending, probably. So maybe that's, you know, put that on them and then uh, put that on them. And if they die, you get applied both, maybe. That'd be cool. But uh, yeah, a bit, bit weird. The, the healing, the way the healing works a bit odd to me. Then we have Glimpse of the Void. Again, a stack of Void Essence per successful ability hit. At four more stacks, your next successful ranged heavy attack will instantly reset all Void Gauntlet cooldowns and remove all stacks. 15 seconds cooldown. So, again, extremely interesting because... Um, yeah, <laughs> all cooldowns reset? Okay. That you, I feel like, you, like this is almost overkill with all the other cooldown reduction perks you have in the other trees. But if you really want to invest like down this road, this is most certainly an interesting one because it also works for healers. Um, what I think is very much on purpose here is that it is uh, only from ranged heavy attacks. So basically, it seems like the way it's coded is you can't get the reset from Void Blade, um, which would be a pretty significant downside, in my opinion, uh, that I guess balances this in a way. So we'll see how exactly that plays out. But um, I would say it's definitely one of the stronger perks because you can consistently cycle a healing through it as well, as long as things are dying around you. Uh, then let's go back to the more basic perks. Um, deadly range, 10% damage on successful ranged heavy attacks against targets more than 8 meters away. Uh, this one's interesting because I would have expected like the opposite on this tree somewhere, like 10% more damage against targets in close range, but instead uh, we have this. Um, yeah, if you can kite enemies, that's good. Obviously it kind of discourages using abilities like Oblivion and Petrifying Scream, so it kind of pushes you more towards this side. Uh, Fev and Thirst, 5% mana per successful ranged light attack against targets afflicted by your Void Gauntlet debuffs. Uh, very easy way to get mana back, uh, because on light attacks it's even easier. Um, yeah, not much to say there, because you're always going to have debuffs on the enemy, so yeah. Uh, radiant, efficiency, radiant efficiency, mana costs are reduced by 25% while above 50% mana. Again, even less mana usage. Uh, refreshing Harvest, cooldowns are reduced by 10% per second while performing Harvest Essence. Now this is probably one of the most insane perks in the tree. And I can totally see a build that actually focuses on this side and still makes use of this tree as well. Um, this again just applies to ranged light attacks, so it's kind of annoying. You kind of have to put a... Like if you just want to get this perk, you have to either get Arbor of Decay or get one of these, which are both not very useful for melee. But this is crazy. Like 10% cooldown reduction per second. You can get um, this perk that reduces... Uh, the health cost if you're low mana. So you get a lot more resets from this. You can very consistently spam this in between. Uh, and especially like for life stuff users as well that, that are just going for a more like secondary debuffing healing route. Um, there's no problem in you burning a little bit of your health to get mana back, uh, to get cooldowns back. 
um and it's it's just so big it's just so big if you can just uh, instantly reset your cooldowns almost instantly reset your cooldowns with some other perks combined here and uh, this one is just a major effect on that in my opinion then we have leeching bolt healing from ranged heavy attacks is increased by an additional 30 percent of damage dealt if the target is below 50 percent health uh very nice as well an additional way of um of increasing the healing similar to what we have in the in the life staff even though um we don't see like nearly as many perks because it's obviously uh, a mix of of healing and debuffing but was certainly a strong perk as well and uh then we've extended suffering successful ranged heavy attacks increase the duration of non crown control debuffs if you uh, you have applied by 10 percent. so it doesn't apply to roots but everything else uh, gets increased um also very very effective and interesting because um here we have the light attacks and here we have the heavy attacks uh, and here we have the uh, heavy attacks again um so here the heavy attacks too so basically most things encourage heavy attacks but if you want to have the other mana restore you can use light attacks but then there's so many other mana perks that you may not need that one so this one like falls off a little bit through the amount of other heavy attack perks that are around and then you have mending evasion dodging with full mana heals you for 80 percent weapon damage uh scales exclusively with focus 20 percent cooldown I think the 25th cents goal on is what balances this because Jesus. Um, you can obviously get to full mana very easily by just uh, using the harvest to lose some of your uh, health and then max out your mana with that because it restores very quick. And then you just dodge and you get massive heal on top of that. So yeah, that's why there's a 20 seconds cool on. So those are the trees. Uh, not everything is working as intended so far, but honestly, um, so far I've been surprised with things not being like completely overboard of, of course people will find ways to break it but uh yeah it's it's definitely looking very interesting i'm def definitely looking forward to testing it more i'll have more stuff later today we'll talk about uh, other changes that affect things and whatnot because there's tons of very very important changes to different weapons from hammer to ice gauntlet to life staff there's just a, a absolute truckload of stealth changes that we still need to talk about but this is the void gauntlet for now these are the ability trees and the perks for it uh, and with that thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get updated of the other videos later today because yeah we've got a lot to go through i hope to see you for the next one soon duke sloth out